Okay, my friends, as I always do, I send off to the people that are talking about doing certain research, and I talked about electron flood theory, and I sent these different pictures to the people that are doing the research on this axion dark matter experiment. These are the people, the contacts, and this is about the axion, a hypothetical particle, sol solves both long-standing problems in nuclear physics and could be responsible for some or, or all dark matter of the universe. So let's take a look into the, what they are looking for in these axions. Alright, this is Seeker, and this is where I just came from, was this University of Washington axion dark matter experiment. Now, uh, and again, this is Seeker, and they are going to go into the new dark matter particle on the edge of physics. Now, I think I can show this. Let me show you what I have to show you, and then we'll see what they say about these things. Okay, these are the two particles they're looking for, is the explosive one, the electron shower, electron neutrino, and the non-explosive one, the boson, which is the carrier of this one. Now, I, and it's called the muon. Now, muon neutrino. Now, I think I could show you that quite simply, and I can actually show you these separating from each other. Now, that's red laser, p -p 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 pulse red laser. Now, as you can see, there's a particle in the center here that's being accelerated and pulling itself out of that pulse red laser wave and exploding here. And at that is where we see the boson and the fermion, which is the weak and the strong force. Now, we saw the particle accelerating, and as it does, it starts to take on this appearance, and then it exploded at the Venturi. But you can see there's a black and a white dot there. A black and a white dot. Here you can see them and it's got a little bit of a spike but over here it's starting to get a big spike coming out and they're crushing and here they're starting to just explode into chaos. Now I believe I'm showing you exactly what they're asking for is the uh, muon and then the electron shower, the muon neutrino and electron neutrinos. You see the black dots? Remember when they were coming through? They came through as like a box of particles like this, a black and a white together. And now the white is exploded and the black has walked away. Now, they talk about the black as, uh, well, I'm saying that that's, well, you can see what you're seeing. You know that they were together and now they're apart. And the black seems don't, they don't seem to affect each other. They don't seem to have any charge, exactly what they say. They're dark particles. They don't have any interactions. The white ones explode like atomic bomb. And then they come back together. And this really puzzles me, how they know enough to come back together. I mean, they're attractive forces, but apparently this dark matter does exist everywhere. And, and that's what they're looking for, is because it's finding the white ones again, and they're starting to reattach to come back. So maybe these dark ones are just everywhere. I, this is something new to me I just sort of thought about in the last few days. But let's go see what they say in the, because that's what they're looking for, is these dark particles that they can't find anywhere, but they know they're there, and they know they have a mass, they know they exist. I guess they know they have a mass. I don't know. At this point, we got some, we got some looking to do. Now, the green ones don't impact until they're quite a bit further out, but they're the same particles, you see it? There's the white and there's the, the black, I mean, the white and the black, but green has a, a different frequency. In other words, the red is like this. We see it as a long frequency, thinking it's a wave. It's not a wave, it's a particle spinning. Now, the green may be down here somewhere. Then you get down to the blue, you're down in here. <coughs> That's the way it works. And just to show you, this is the back spin. Now, you've got the particle spinning. You see this? Spin like this. Spin, spin, spin. Most of them going through the center, but they are going to be trying to push each other away, so it starts to set up lines of interference. They're repulsion lines, and this is only a single slit, so what they are, and they start to spread more and more and more as they get off further and further because there's less particles, but that's, this is just like a drill bit spinning through space. 
And that appears to be a photon. And it, it appears like there's two electrons almost, like one here and one here or one here or one here, however you want to look at it. And and when they concuss, the white ones explode like a bomb, and the black ones roll off, and they just stay in this exact same configuration. They don't don't, don't do anything different. So they're like the weak force, and this is like the strong explosive force, boson fermion. That's the, that's the only way I can take it. All right, I hear all the time, oh, you can't see light particles with a, uh, it's just actually a cell phone. Rod has a technique that he uses to do this where it's illumination and blackness. And, 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 and it can see the particles. It actually can see the particles. It's, it's a phenomena that I can't explain, but it, it can, you can see them. And you can see them spinning. That's why they're like on this way. They're spinning like crazy. And they're moving fast. And, and it can pick them up. He's got a, he's, he's fabulous at this, and we've been doing this for several years now. This is not something that happened overnight. He just said, ooh, look at this. This is very, very well established now. These are literally the Higgs fields, and that is literally the tiny particle inside. 